Hey everyone, I know I haven't been putting very many videos and everything here lately. We've just been real busy here in the shop. So I want to show you real quick um, some of the dry can we've been doing. So I switched over just a couple days ago to a corn cob grit and it's been leaving the hides really soft, really clean. These are really white hides. So um, been, doing, been doing really good with them. Uh, the raccoon as well. This one right here is a pretty dark raccoon, but we can flip it over, flip it over here and you can see, see how nice and soft that is. So there's that. I'll show you what the noise is here. These guys making noise. Okay. Anyway, back to it. So these fox up here are drying. I found that a lot of times you can let fox dry almost completely all the way before you even need to tumble them because they break so easy in the tumbler that you really don't need to keep throwing them in there, uh, you know, two or three times like I do with some of the other fur, especially beaver and the deer hide. But so these are more dried up. These ones down here were put away last night, so that's why they look a lot more wet because I don't want the beaver, the beaver over there, the raccoon hides and stuff, these deer hides like I talked about. I don't want these to over dry uh, because they're really hard to break and get back uh, the way they're supposed to be. Here's a, here's a different colored kind of raccoon here. This is a, a really light colored one. You can see this tail here, it's like blondes and browns in it. It's pretty cool. If you ever get one like that, they're real. They're, they're usually light on the belly and stuff almost always when they get that light color phase. And, uh, but they're, they're really cool to work with because it's, it's something that you don't see all the time. So here's a dark little raccoon here. So I like, I think that's pretty cool. Um, this coyote here, it's uh, pretty damp, but it's, uh, it was one of the ones that should be on the other rack, but there's just not enough room. I normally try and keep stuff uh, separated. Here's some uh, deer hoof projects. These are uh, dried out, cut and dried out. So um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with them yet. We started a second tank. Uh, we're going to start doing some wet tans. Um, over there's our other tank that we've had already. Uh, so let me show you the corn cob grit in this tumbler here. So it's still the same old, same old tumbler. Uh, but we got corn cob grit in here now. So let me see if I can get you guys back to it. If you can see that. So um, let me show you over here. There it is. So, corn cob grit. I guess a lot of people are using it for oil dry, and some people are even using it for like sandblasting for like delicate uh, things. But it's so far so good. I, I say I haven't ran it a whole lot yet. I've only had it in the shop here this week, so I'm I'm uh, I'm still a little hesitant on leaving stuff in there for a long long period of time, but. We'll uh, we'll eventually get around to we'll eventually get around to testing it out on some more stuff. But I want to try it out on my own stuff here in the shop uh, first. So you can see this stuff here needs a little stir stir. This is this is uh, the tank here. We put all the green stuff in here um, right after we skin and everything. We, we'll put it in here for a couple of days and let it kind of. Uh, We'll kind of start tanning a little bit at first, then we'll move it over here to the big tank so that way it doesn't take down the chemicals in the big tank as much because uh, we have to write down everything for uh, all, all the stuff we dump into the sewer we gotta keep track of. So we can't just uh, keep dumping the big tank like nonstop and stuff. So I try to, I try to use a smaller tank first and work my way up to the bigger one. Um, that's just, that's just to try and help out things. It's not like they're really, I use citric acid and salt. They're basically food stuff. So it's nothing crazy. Um, 
this tumbler here, I'm gonna have a video on uh, eventually, but uh, so I bought this tumbler last year. We got it down here in the shop. It's called a Reliable. It's, uh, uh, it's an old made in the USA tumbler. So um, what the problem is though is it's, I have a uh, single phase 220 here in the shop over here and the motor on this is three phase. So what they did is they ran it up, they went into this box, they came down, they got a pony motor down here um, to generate the third leg. But the problem is, is I don't know if it's the capacitor or the relay switch inside, inside that pony motor uh, box here that's bad and you can buy three phase converters for like 90 bucks on Amazon. So I just bought a three phase converter. So all this stuff's gonna be removed and we're just gonna throw the converter on there and that way our drive motor back here, uh, it'll have what it needs to run and we'll be able to run this machine. So hopefully I'll have some videos of it going through that process and, and uh, getting it running good. So other than that, that's pretty much an update of what's going on here in the shop.